Hello and welcome to Landscape Photography World, the podcast for everyone passionate about landscape photography. I'm Grant Swinburne. I'll be your host on this show, talking to landscape photographers about their motivations, likes and dislikes. Gord Follett is a Newfoundland-based landscape photographer who lives in the town of Paradise with his wife and kids. He's been combining his love of photography in Newfoundland to capture the essence of its landscapes and cultural scenes. He enjoys travelling to different areas of the province to photograph different landscapes and seaport scenes. We discuss his local area and the many landscapes he has to choose from, his ways of balancing full-time work with his creative pursuits, and a whole lot more. I hope you enjoy the show. G'day, Gord. Welcome to Landscape Photography World. How are you going? Good, good. How are you, uh, Grant? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. I've been looking at your work and following you for some time and pretty impressed with what I've seen. How about you tell us a little bit about why you do what you do? I've been doing it for probably nine years now, but more seriously in the past four or five years. Mm -hmm. I started, uh, I got. A, I picked up a camera when uh, we knew we were going to have my son, actually. and. Mm -hmm. The biggest reason that was the biggest reason why uh, I started photography because I wanted to uh, learn a little bit of portrait uh, to take pictures of my son. Sure. And uh, so I just kind of uh, started to, uh, uh, you know, learn learn a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. And one one night I went to uh, a park in St. John's. Actually, it's called yep. Boring Park. And during the winter. They'll have it all done up with uh, Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I took my camera down, of course, and uh, I tried a few shots, a few, ha few handheld shots. This was at night, so I didn't know what I was doing. Yep. And quarter second shots. So they were a little bit blurry, but they came out okay in my eyes, of course. Anyway, so I posted a few, and, and some people liked it, a few, few people asking for prints. So uh, it just kind of went from there. So I kind of got interested into uh, landscape photography a little bit after that and one thing led to another so i started of course down the rabbit hole of youtube mm -hmm. as a lot of photographers have done of course it was it was kind of an addiction actually so it, i would learn a little bit here and there you know i'd start with you know learning a little bit about uh, the exposure triangle all the the basic yep. stuff composition all that kind of stuff you started out in youtube and you started developing your skills i guess and and understanding the the camera and the gear a little bit better what then sort of sparked the interest in landscapes per se i'd say that probably goes back further to when i was a, a teenager um mm -hmm. i lived in ontario for until i was about 13. yep so anyway we we're, my parents decided to move back home and we drove well from ontario to newfoundland which is about a you know, 2,000 kilometers and drove through Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia was absolutely beautiful. I had no <laughs> idea. But then we got off the boat at Port of Basque. A little while after, you start seeing all the mountains, and I had no idea because the last time I was in Newfoundland, I was nine years old, and yep. I lived in St. John's, which is – and I pretty much hadn't been outside of St. John's, so I didn't really know what Newfoundland was like. Yeah, yeah. So – I always remembered that I was always Newfoundland was, I, I had no idea how beautiful it was. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Newfoundland and what people could expect to see if they visited? Oh, there's plenty, of course. Um, you got everything from up on the Northern Peninsula, uh, Gross Morn mm -hmm. and the Long Range Mountains, tab the Tablelands, which is, which is a crazy place, actually. Um, when you're driving down the road, you can see in the summertime, uh, it's cool. You got green on one side, and it looks like Mars on the other. Yeah. So they're the complete opposites. And uh, there's only one other place that the table ends. It's uh, uh, in the world. I thought it was Australia, but I'm, I could be wrong on that. And it's something to do with the Earth's mantle. Okay. Uh, had come up somehow thousands of years ago. Hmm. And not a lot grows there, so that's why it's got kind of that like little Mars look. Yep. Also, uh, then you got down on the west coast. There's some beautiful mountains like the the Wreck House, Codroy Valley, and then Central, which is you know is where a lot of the icebergs will come down in in April. 
and mm. uh, May and June, and then shortly after that, you'll see the whales. Yep. And then, and then of course, on my side of the island, the East Coast, uh, you got St. John's, which is a beautiful city. Mm. It's an old, uh, old city. They say it's the oldest city in North America. So it's got a lot of history and it's got a lot of interesting architecture and old buildings. Yeah. And then just, just not too far from me with it anywhere within a couple of hours, there's plenty of coastline, plenty of sea stacks. Yeah. All yeah. kinds of landscapes. Yeah. So you kind of got, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've got a forest, mountains, sea, icebergs, Arctic tundra. You've got Mars like. Structure it sounds, sounds sounds like you've got it pretty much all. <laughs> it's there's there's a huge variety. It definitely like I I definitely it's it's a photographer's playground for sure, mm. right? Yeah, like and it's it's great because like well now of course fall it it's beautiful in certain parts of the island uh, during fall. So like I'm heading down to the west coast now yep. next week, and uh, that's absolutely beautiful. All kinds of fall colors, plenty of coastlines to play with, and then of course. You know, there's there's places on the island you can do winter photography, but then when the spring hits, you, the icebergs will come down. Yep. Not every year is great, but most years you're, you'll definitely get plenty of big icebergs in certain parts of the island. Yep. So they they'll start at the northern tip of Newfoundland, right mm -hmm. down to central, right down where I am on the east coast. Yeah. And they call that iceberg alley. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and some years there's thousands of icebergs. Yeah, and quite a lot of them beach themselves on on the coast as well, don't they? They do, yeah, they do. Uh, and this year we had one in Triton. That was a massive iceberg, and mm. uh, that one hung around in that spot for geez, it had to been six weeks. Wow. Yeah. So plenty of opportunities to get up close and personal. Yeah, definitely. Yes, for sure. Uh, people taking you out in boats, and it was close enough to shore. You could just I was using. You know, I was using wide angles sometimes. Wow. <laughs> so it was that close, right? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. What's your favorite spot? Where Where do you like to shoot and what keeps calling you back? Uh, there's a couple, actually. I'll, Chance Cove comes to mind as one of the, one of my favorite places. It's, uh, it's a place, it's about an hour from where I live. Mm -hmm. There's, there's two fairly big sea stacks, one bigger than the other, um, there's like plenty of bald eagles, plenty of wildlife. Uh, in, in in the spring, you'll get the capelin, just like a little small fish. I don't know if you know what a capelin is. I've, it's almost I, the size I've not of a come across it before, but uh, yeah, go and describe the, it. The whales, the whales follow them in, so okay. it's you know sort of one of their food sources. Yep. And they're probably the size of a, they're probably smaller than a mackerel. Okay. All right, and they'll roll up on the beach and flop around. And uh, they're like huge schools. And, and w when you're there near the beach, you'll see like a, the water will turn black. Wow. All of a sudden. And you know yeah. the cape when they're there, right? So, yeah. So that's, uh, you know, bald eagles, uh, cape along the beach there. And, uh, of course, the two big sea stacks. And then out in the distance in, in, in July, you'll, you'll hear whales coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I do. Uh, there was an interesting story actually. Uh, last time was this is yes last last trip I made to Chance Cove actually, mm -hmm. and that was one of my favorite shots actually. So uh, you know I went up and uh, I was at the second sea stack. It's this really tall sea sea stack, and uh, I'm up on this trail looking down, and uh, you can see the beach down below, and yep. uh, the Capelin were rolling along the beach, and uh, the uh, Bald eagles were hovering above. It took my shots that morning. It was beautiful. So on the way back, I was uh, walking along the trail, and I heard a big swoosh coming out of the trees. And I turn, and here's a massive bald eagle coming straight for me. Wow! <laughs> and I had the I had the tripod at the ready, and but luckily he swerved about five feet away from me. Wow! But the but the adrenaline was going. I can so. imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I remember actually when I was oh. Uh... I was about five or six, I think, and I was at this. Uh, we we're at this wildlife park that the parents took me to. We have a, a wedge tail eagle, which is kind of the biggest eagle in in, in Australia, and you know they can yeah. have like a, a two meter wingspan on them. 
And, uh, yeah, this thing was on a perch and he basically flew up off the perch. He was, he was actually uh, had a collar on his leg so he couldn't go too far. But literally he just about landed on my head as a, as a five-year-old. Freaked me out. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm, and they can definitely do some damage. So Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I'm glad he swerved. Yeah, I can imagine. No, I'll say that's definitely one of the places that, uh, you know, I keep going back to. Like the first time I, I was at that place, I was blown away just by the, the size of the sea stacks and uh, just just from the different types of compositions mm. you can shoot there. I mean, I, I shoot all – I don't just shoot landscape, of course. I'm, I'm no. doing some like cultural shots, things like that um, as well, and uh, fishing stages, sometimes the city. But I, I really like the pure landscapes and the sea, seascapes and sea stacks are, are definitely my favorite. Yeah. Well, I was, I was going to ask what your, how you would describe your style to somebody that uh, hadn't seen any of your work. I can't pinpoint my style, but I do like, I mean, I do like atmosphere. I do like, you know, adding a little bit of magic in there a mm-hmm. little bit, as well as trying to, you know, keep the scene as authentic as possible. Sure, sure. You know, obviously, I do. I do edit. There's no question about that. You know, I'll, I'll use. I do like long exposures. You know, yep. and it depends on what the scene is, of course. Sure. You know, I mean, uh, but I I can't really put my foot like on what my particular style would be. It, yeah. I would say my because I'm I'm still changing a lot. I'm still. I don't. Um, you don't stick to any particular genre, and I guess no wonder nope. living where you do, you've got wildlife, you've got architecture, you've got the the, the landscapes as well. Um, I guess for for me, when I see it, it you know, very vibrant colours and really, uh, I guess, crisp but very realistic sort of uh, imagery, and to me, it really gives a, a sense of the place. In which the photo has been taken, you know, for for me, it, it sort of transports me there. I can I can feel the the chill in the air when it, it's you, you've got your autumn colours which are, are coming on now, and you, you you can sort of feel oh yeah, it's it's definitely going to be getting a little bit colder there than uh, than where I am now. We're we're headed in towards summer now. Oh, for sure, it was like uh, it was like five degrees the other day, but but felt like one, so it was mm. and I. Yesterday morning, it was uh, there was frost on the grass, so it's uh, it's definitely quite quite cold now. <laughs> do you have goals in your photography, and do you think it's important to have goals in your photography? Uh, I don't really have goals in the sense that okay, I need to achieve something. Mm-hmm. I'm just more. I think I'm more driven uh, with my photography just to you know improve. If I see something that you know a particular style or a particular um, technique that I think could uh, be useful for something that I'm already uh, I already have in mind like I might have a particular lo- location yep. that I have in mind and I may you know try to learn that tech uh, learn a technique to uh, do justice to that particular scene I have in mind yeah you no know, for example like uh, we have a, a ship that's at uh, Harbor Grace. Mm-hmm. That's been sitting there since 1969. It's an old ship just sitting there in the harbor. I always thought that, you know, that would look really cool as a ghost ship. Yep. Learning some uh, long exposure techniques and with the right conditions, I I I think I captured one of my one of my favorite shots. Mm-hmm. Very very ghostly looking, ethereal looking scene. Yeah. Yeah. I guess living where you do, I'm I'm always interested in the nexus between your place, your subject, and your technique. I mean, I'm interested in, in whether or not photographers have actually thought about which one comes first. Is it where you where you live drives the types of shots that you take and the subjects that you take, or is it the subjects that you take that drives where you live to a certain degree? Um, because, you know, some people make choices about where they live because of what they like to shoot. Or does the technique and what your style of shooting and how you want to shoot drive the other two? Uh, I would say the subjects definitely do drive 
the types of techniques that I I choose to do for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, like uh, there is quite a quite a bit of a variety here, so I, I I I definitely do use a wide range of techniques to you know to capture some of the scenes. I mean, I use focal lengths all the way from 14 all the way up to 200. I mean, I've yeah. probably some more beyond that, but mostly I use I go from 200 or below. Yep, yep. But but I I hear landscape photographers say all the time they use either from they shoot from 14 to 35 or 100 to 200 and they don't shoot anything in between. But here yeah. in Newfoundland, like there's I would say there's plenty most of my shots are from 35 to 70 mil because okay. of some of the scenes that we have here in the fishing communities. It lends itself better to use that focal length. Yeah, to get um, in, the, in a little bit tighter than that sort of tighter, a little less lands, distor- grand landscape sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, and a little less distortion for certain buildings. Sometimes it's nice the distortion is, but sometimes it's it, it's better for it to just look the way you see it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So those focal lengths uh, lend itself well to those subjects. Yeah. Do you set yourself any projects when you when when you're thinking about your work? Are you are you I, I guess it, it, it's a way of asking the the question around planning versus being more spontaneous. Are you somebody that you know has a concept before they go into the field and says that's what I want to shoot and that's where I'm going to go and I, I kind of know where I'm going to stand and I've measured it all out in photo pills and all the rest of it and I know where the sun's going to come up or the moon or whatever. Or are you more, okay, I'm going to turn up, what I get is what I get? I do do some planning. Uh, it depends. If if it's close uh, to where I live, if it's, if it's within an hour or two, I'll do plenty of planning. Like It won't be too extensive, but in the sense of, okay, I want certain conditions sure. for uh, a particular scene I have in mind. And I can just kind of wait for those conditions cause, because I'm only within an hour or two from that particular uh, location. But if I'm traveling to a place that's, you know, I'm going to spend, you know, four or five hours, the, the most planning I'll do is just check the forecast and yeah. oh. see what, you know, uh, forecast uh, suits the locations that are within, say, an hour of where I'm staying. And uh, I'll make a decision based off, you know, what the forecast is for each of those locations. But of course, first thing I'll I'll usually do when I do go into a place that I'm staying, you know, for three or four days, um, Mm. plenty of scouting ahead of time. And then, of course, I would make my decisions based off that. But yeah, well, so like if I'm and then when I when I'm on the scene itself, I'll size it up, you know, with my camera. You know, through looking through the viewfinder to see if I can take advantage of wide the wide angle distortion. Yeah. You know, right. When it comes to say flowers or say you know a sea stack or whatever, mm-hmm. and just to see what the lines are going to look like, or I might zoom in just to see what the frame is going to look like. You know, just simple stuff like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Are you more into the artistic side? Or the realistic side of photography? Are you trying to portray what you see exactly how you see it or are you trying to do something more artistic with it? And by that I mean, aside from editing, I mean in terms of composition, in terms of colour and in terms of how you actually pull that shot together. Uh, both, I would say. Um, okay. And it depends on the shot, of course. Sure. Right. As uh, some some scenes, just it lends itself to just take the shot, get all the information you need, just and um, bracket if you need. Yep. And just just take the shot. Um. But uh, and then there's other scenes where yeah, I'll I'll definitely play with long exposures to give it that ethereal look to make the water look very milky or ethereal, you know, around the rocks. Sure. I'll definitely do some of that, but uh, I would say some of my best shots are just just taking the shot. For example, uh, I did a trip there recently down in Buren. I started out the morning was uh, before the sun came up. It was uh, it was extremely foggy. I had started in this area called uh, Porter Bra, and there was a an old boat there uh, laid on side on the side of shore on the sh- side of the shore. And it had some nice reflections, and it was very foggy. 
I, I just, you know, took a couple of snaps. That's all, all to a shot. Like to just frame it up and, and shoot it is not, not much more to it than that. Mm-hmm. And then fog would not lift. So I didn't think I was going to get a sunrise. So I went down to another location that's in Buren itself that I had shot the night before. So I decided to run down there and just to see what it would look like. And the sun was just starting to come up and uh, the fog lifted a little bit in the distance. Yep. But it was these set of houses that are just kind of out on the edge by themselves. Mm. So it lit up the fog. The sun nice. Did. And it pretty much, the, the fog itself, there was, uh, had covered everything that was in the distance, the hills. Yep. So all you could see was the, the houses. Nice. And the yellow, and the yellow, the yellow lights. So there was not much more to than just taking a snap of that. And then there's other times where, of course, you know, I will, I'll use, uh, long exposures. I'll, I'll use focus stacking, mm-hmm. um, depending on the scene. And uh, exposure blending, depending on the scene, of course. Yeah, nice, nice. What is it that you're looking for? What is it that catches your eye that says, yep, that's the composition that I want? I usually have something in mind Okay. beforehand. Again, like I was saying before, I'll I'll scout out the areas. Mm -hmm. So if I'm scouting, I'm looking for definitely shapes, definitely um, color for sure. You know, if I'm in a fishing community, I'm looking for something a little, you know, that stands out from the town itself. Yep. You know, usually it's a fishing stage, could be a boat, could be reflections, you know. And if I'm in a, a along a coastline, of course, sea stacks are some of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I will look, see if there's an unusual, uh, anything unusual about the coastline itself, see what way the uh, waters hitting the coast maybe i could do some interesting uh long exposures sure, sure. is this a full-time career or a hobby or what what is it in your life and how do you balance the rest of your life with the photography side of things uh, it's it's just a side thing uh, right now and i think that's the way it will be um mm-hmm. i do have a full-time job um so i need i have a uh, two kids and a wife so i need that security yep yep um but it is a nice little you know side gig so i i do uh make money in several different ways sure from prints to licensing to sometimes uh i'll pick up a contract uh for an advertising company Mm -hmm. and i'll do a bit of work there but you know it keeps me quite busy considering a full-time job and two kids yeah yeah i can imagine (laughs) yeah. <laughs> so what what techniques have you got to try and get that balance right um, you know obviously the photography can take a bit of time you know going out scouting getting, getting the shots then coming back editing are you doing your own prints or are you using a, a, a print service to manage that side of things what what are you doing to i guess i do on? use a, a print service actually um mm-hmm. i've been using them for a long while uh, place here called Newfoundland Canvas. Okay. And, uh, they do an excellent job. I don't really want to get involved in, in the printing side of thing myself. Sure, sure. I would just rather, you know, somebody else take care of that. I just do the shooting yeah. and the editing. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I think the uh, the printing side of things is uh, a bit of a black art. If you uh, yeah. if you know, you know. If you don't, it's, it's a bit arcane and... Uh, Working out how to how to operate with all the different inks and papers and what's going to look good with that particular image is uh, a, a pretty tough choice, I think. And uh, yeah, I'd I'd rather leave it to the specialist. It's not not my speciality, certainly. So, are you working closely with uh, the guys at Newfoundland Canvas, or are you sort of you just send them the files and they they send you back the finished product, or do you do you, do you have a real strong dialogue between? Them? Um, what they do is they have a uh, a site's called Art Funnels, basically, and what that is, you just uh, it's a free website, basically. Okay. Pretty much any artist, if they want, they can set it set it up there and uh, upload your files, and uh, you just you as the artist would promote it. Yep. And uh, 
and they take care of the printing side of things. Um, I mean, I do stay in contact with them from time to time if I have a particular question or issue or anything like that. Sure. But to be honest with you, I've been doing work with them for probably four or five years now, and I've had no issues. And uh, their their print quality is excellent. Um, yeah, I've had no issues at all. So in terms of where you shoot, do you stay fairly local, as in Newfoundland, or do you go further afield? Are you, you know, branching out into Nova Scotia or other parts of Canada, the US, uh, and international travel? Nova Scotia I would love to go to, but right now was it's just all Newfoundland. I definitely got my uh, certain locations in mind mm -hmm. that I want to hit. Of course, the West Coast is, is next. Yep. Next year is uh, Francois. It's a place uh, that's on the south coast of Newfoundland. And the only way to get in there is by boat. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and it's like the the town is, is in this little fjord, mm -hmm. fjord. So you, you go in there by boat, of course. And uh, there's, a, uh, there's another fjord, I believe, up on the back somewhere as well. So it's, it's, it's quite isolated. And I think there's only... 200 people living there now wow okay yeah so i'm looking forward so next uh july i think i'm gonna take a shot down there yeah, yeah but as as of right now newfoundland is is my playground when it comes to landscape photography and it probably will be for a long time to come considering yeah. young why, why would you go anywhere yeah. else when you got so yeah. much yeah. <laughs> for sure right is there's no shortage of of anything to shoot here yeah What's your most uh, memorable experience that you've had while taking photos? I would say probably recent. That trip to Bjorn was quite memorable. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that scene I explained to you earlier about the fog, um, yep. I was going to go down to um, I was going to go down to uh, Chambers Cove. Okay. And uh, when I uh, I went down and it, uh, it was. Uh, it was quite foggy along the coast, so I waited there for, I don't know, maybe four or five hours, mm -hmm. hanging around, checking out the coast, checking out different spots, hoping hoping that the fog would lift, and it never did. So I decided to uh, head, uh, it was probably an, an hour away to this place called uh, Harbor Mill. There was this uh, sea stack that was pretty well next to the beach, mm -hmm. and it had a couple of trees on top, so it was very oh. interesting. Yep. So I went down there in the evening. And uh, I was blown away, actually, by the mountains in that area. Very, very close, in my opinion, to Gross Morn in mm -hmm. size. And so I set up that night and had, took a few shots. This, you know, the light wasn't, it wasn't the best. So the next morning I got up, took a few shots again. And as I was, I thought the light was done. I picked up my tripod, my camera, started to walk back to my truck. And I turned around and the light just started to, uh, you know, turn red, orange. That's, that's always the way. As soon as you pick yep. your tripod up, it's uh, it's on. <laughs> so, yeah, well, so I ran back down, of course. I took a few shots and I got something what I thought was, you know, it was pretty good. So then I decided to, uh, to I didn't get a chance to look around the, the night before. So I decided to have a quick look around to see if I could get something before the light left. Yep. And there's a little place called Bay Largent. And mm -hmm. as you're driving along the mountains, there's like this little road that goes across to Bay Largent and it's like across the bay. It's a, the road is like in the middle of the bay going yep. across to Bay Largent. And I look, I look, look back and I saw the mountains. There was the mist was rolling along the mountains. The sun was just coming up over it and there was a beautiful reflection. So I took a few shots there. Went inside the community, and there was a there was a boat sitting there with beautiful reflections, a mountain in the background, nice. and then there was a fishing stage there, and the mountains in the background with the mist. It, it was just, it I think it was some of the best shots I've, I've taken. Fantastic! In the span of probably forty minutes. Nice. So Great. that's probably one of definitely one of the most memorable moments. How about horror life. stories? Every everyone's got a horror story. Okay, so besides the ball legal, I do have another one. <laughs> My first time in Gross, no, second time in Grossmore, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a place called Rocky Harbor. There's a lighthouse nearby. Yep. So I decided to do a little bit of a astro that night, the lighthouse. 
and there's this little trail near the lighthouse and next to the trail there's a set of trees yep and i hear and and there's a field on the other side of the trees so i hear swoosh 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 swoosh, swoosh coming through the field so uh, you know of course that got my attention yep next thing you know i see the trees rattling shh, 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 shh. And I tried to turn on my flash egg for whatever reason. I must have had it on a setting where it was blinking. So I oh, couldn't yeah. get a real good view to see what it was. And I, when I did do that, I heard a little bit of a squeal. And, of course, I p- took the tripod up and ran over to the lighthouse, looked back. I didn't see anything. So I decided to just head back to my car. I uh, looked up the sounds for bears. And yep. it was, I'm pretty sure it was a black bear. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> – it was quite if i had a hair it would be hair raising that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so do you do, do you take precautions like carrying bear spray or anything like that around with you or? no I, I i i don't as far as i know bear spray is illegal here oh okay but yeah but um no i don't but if you look up bear attacks in newfoundland yeah I don't think there are any. I tried to look it up just to see. Yeah, okay. I was just curious one day to see. Um, but the bears here, generally speaking, they're more afraid of people than you yeah, are. Yeah, mostly. They're pretty they skittish. Yeah. 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 yeah we you don't get the uh, the um, the brown bears there, do you? Or No, just black bears. Just black bears, yeah. Some they coyotes. Tend, they tend to be a little bit more afraid of uh, of humans than the, the browns. The browns tend to be more aggressive. Yes. Hundred yeah. percent. <laughs> Still, I mean, at night, nothing, uh, nothing worse than having a, a, a large carnivorous wild animal rooting around oh, no. in the grass near you. <laughs> oh yeah, well, it took me a little while to get to sleep that night. Imagine <laughs> the adrenaline was going. Yeah, but luckily, I haven't, I haven't had a run in like that again. But I am going down to the west coast, so they're they're more abundant in that area. Yeah, right. Uh, my part of the island, it's very rare to see a black bear, so I don't usually have to worry about that on my side. But uh, once you hit central and then the west coast, uh, that's where most of the black bears are. Yeah, sure. What's the practice of photography taught you about the world? It's definitely uh, it's opened my eyes a little bit in the sense of the way I see uh, light, and mm. uh, it's definitely made me more observant. That's for mm-hmm. sure. Like, whereas before I would probably, you know, drive by or walk by a place I, I probably would not have looked at before. Like now I find that I'm always looking, especially in the evening or in the morning to see what the light looks like on a particular, you know, object or, uh, mm-hmm. you know, on the grass or, you know, how it's hitting the water or, just to see how, how interesting the light is. Whereas before, it would have just been a mundane thing for me. So it definitely, yeah. uh, it has, it's, it's definitely uh, made me more observant. Yeah, cool. What's your routine in the field? Do you do, you do anything in particular that, what, what's the first thing once you, you've hiked into your location, you've got to your location? Is it tripod up, straight into taking shots, or are you more introspective around it and soaking in the atmosphere before you get into it uh, a little bit of soaking in the atmosphere a little bit but uh, usually what, what i'll do is i'll i won't even take out the camera i'll just look around uh mm-hmm. see what's interesting uh, once i find something that i think is a little bit interesting i'll pull out pull out the camera you know look look at it through the viewfinder i always prefer looking through the viewfinder because i oh. i find i can pick up on you know i watch for the edges Yep. of the uh, of the frame just to see how it's going to affect the foreground or you know the the clouds or any lines anything like that so i i, I definitely I'll, I'll do that and then once i uh you know once i i think i have something you know I, that's when the tripod will come out yep um but sometimes before that I'll, i will use my phone because uh, I'll, I'll put on the wide on my phone just to see okay is that going to be interesting because Instead of just taking out my camera, once you know I'm satisfied, I'll 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 take out the tripod, put the camera on the tripod, uh, and look through the viewfinder again. I might shift it around slightly. I might lower lower the tripod a little bit or raise it just to get that you know perfect little composition. And then mm-hmm. I'll just try to zoom in, zoom out, and try to exclude anything 
that I don't want in the frame or include anything. Um, and then from there, I'll, uh, I'll do a few test shots, a few test shots of, uh, different shutter speeds. Take yep. for in- instance, if it's a, if it's a, uh, if I'm doing a, a seascape, you know, I'll play around with, I'll start with usually a half a second shutter speed. Cause that's usually my favorite. I usually find water at, at a half second. Uh, looks, looks very interesting. Yep. And I may increase it or decrease it based off that. And, or I may consider doing an extreme long exposure. And from there, I'll probably just play around with it. And, uh, I may do some, I may do some bracketing and uh, exposure blend after if I think I need it. Uh, but most of the time I usually like to shoot to the side of the sun because I usually find the light a little bit more interesting that way. Yeah. Plus yeah. it's a little, little less work in, in post. Yeah, true. <laughs> right. So, um, but yeah, I will shoot toward the sun if I have to. That's pretty much it. Yeah, cool. So you've got your shot. You're pretty happy with it. Are you straight home and into the editing suite or do you leave it lying around on the hard drive for a a few hours, days, months, years before you get into it. It depends on the shot. Um, some shots I get a little overexcited, yep. so I'll uh, I'll probably get in and just play. Now I I probably won't finish the shot right away. I might just do some a quick edit just to see where it can go. Yeah, got it. And yeah, so I'll just play around for a little bit, and uh, again I might not. Uh, fully edit it um mm. and usually i find that I just i'll wait until i'm in the mood to actually sit down and edit yep i won't force myself to do it um because i i love editing so i want it to be fun so i, yeah. I really don't want to force myself to do it yeah fair um enough. but yeah so um but I'll, I'll definitely let some some images sit i've had images where I, I had on my hard drive for almost two years wow. and then I would finally edit them. Right. Yeah. But after, of course, I've edited all my favorites and, but you know, sometimes what happens, your tastes change or you see something you didn't see before yeah. or you learned a new editing technique that, uh, made it a little bit more interesting. Um, yeah. but other than that, that's pretty much how I do it. Cool. Any you Lightroom, Photoshop combined, or just one or the other, or and you know, are you you know stacks of uh, of layers, or are you fairly minimal with your edits? Uh, depends on the shot again. Uh, like that, the a, a good example would be that one in uh, Bjord, for instance. I mm-hmm. mean, I do use Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, I'll usually just do like some. A little bit of uh, shadow work and a little bit of highlight work just to get it to the exposure roughly that I want yep. and bring it into uh, Photoshop. And with this shot, that was from Bjorn. And I just, you know, a little bit of contrast work, not not a whole lot. There was there, were, there was no exposure blending, just a simple, mm. simple shot, right? And just make sure I, got, I had my... Uh, my shadows and my contrast where I wanted it and a little bit of saturation work. But other than that, not much. But but I will go into uh, exposure blending. I'll use luminosity masks at times. It depends on the shot again. Yep. yep. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's yep. all I, I'll, I'll go. That's do, you find, much what I, do you find those ones that you don't need to do too much to more satisfying or... Do you really like, I mean, you said you liked editing. Do you, do you really like those ones that you actually, you know, put that little bit of extra polish on, you know, take, take your time over and put a little, little bit more effort? Which ones do you tend to gravitate towards in terms of, you know, the ones that you like more? Uh, I, again, I, like, I do like to edit. But I'm still excited about a shot that I don't have to do a whole lot of work as long as the shot, you know, it's beautiful and, and mm-hmm. it's what I was going for. And I did capture what I wanted in camera. I, I'm, I'm still good with that. But at the same time, 
uh, I have no qualms at sitting down for a good hour or so to edit an image if it need if need be. Yeah. If I'm in if I'm in the right mood, uh, no no problem. I have no problem sitting down and editing for an hour. But yeah, if either way, it it floats. Yeah. No, I definitely, that's cool. uh, so you mentioned that you know a lot of this, a lot of your craft was learnt from YouTube. Did you do anything else other than that, or was it purely self self teaching through uh, learning through others' experience? Most of it was self teaching in the sense, like yes, I would learn a few things from YouTube, like if I wanted to learn the exposure triangle, or if I wanted to learn long exposures, I would just pick one thing and try go out try that and then on to the next thing sort of thing uh but that's that's pretty much uh, the way i did it over the years i i would just learn a little bit here a little bit there and and uh something would nag at me where you know it just doesn't you know well, why is it why does my work it, it just there's just something not right about it something so it missing could be the shadow yeah it, or it looked too contrasty uh, you know yeah. I, I think a lot of that is just it's not so much the tools themselves it's just your your eye getting used to where your contrast should be where your shadow should be yeah. where your highlights where your color should be and maybe that's not necessarily where it should be maybe it's more um your tastes changing yeah. over time yeah. where you just prefer that look so uh, it's, it's hard to say really <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean you're better right yeah no 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 I, every, everyone's yeah. on their own learning curve and you know some are so, some are i won't say towards the end of their learning curve but you know they're they're towards the mastery of their craft as opposed to you know the, the the beginners, and um, you know, I, I think it, it's an important message for people that are just starting out or have you know been doing it for a little while, and they're they're dissatisfied with their own work, and it, you know maybe because they're comparing it to somebody else. What I tend to advise people is compare it to your work two, three, four, five years ago. You know. And when you have a look at that, you go, okay, now I see how far I've actually progressed and I know that I'm actually progressing and not, you know, and unless you're still just sort of taking it out and sending the saturation slider to 11. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 100%. Now that you say it that way, that there has been a couple of times where I did go back and look, look at some of my work that I did in the past. So I can I can honestly say I have improved compared to then, yeah. <laughs> but but over the last couple of years I, I don't know if it's improvement or if it's just like what I said before it's just my yeah, taste, taste change a little yeah. bit. And that's the thing, bit, you, right? your taste do change as you as you get more exposed to it, as you as you gain experience in it. I think uh, I, I think your taste definitely change. I know yeah. I, I'm trying to um, veer. Oh, towards the I, I guess the less popular images that you see floating yeah. around instagram where you know lot you know quite quite vivid quite vibrant images you know i, I like vibrant colors and you know yeah me too, so forth and i like a, a, an impactful shot but i'm i'm also actually um I, I i've decided what i want to do is more of those gentler uh images and the ones that aren't quite as mm -hmm. you know the dramatic necessarily you know and that yeah. that's a combination of the technique but also the subject matter as well so looking for those compositions that lend themselves to that sort of gentler feel as opposed to that more you know dramatic env environment feel yeah you know, i mean that said if there's a dramatic storm sky or something like that i'll i'll get out there and shoot it you know <laughs> for sure for sure i, I get it so are there any particular photographers or tutorials that you particularly follow to, to learn from? You know, I mean, I, I, I've got a few favorites myself, but I'm, I'm just interested in the, the ones that you sort of pulled we out. We may have some similar. We may Probably. have some similar. Uh, Nick Page, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a given for sure, and he puts out a lot of great stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Ryan Dyer, I definitely like some of his stuff. And... Uh, who else? Uh, Matt 
Peterson. I, ha- yeah. I haven't looked at any of his tutorials, though, but I mean, I do follow him. I find him very entertaining. Um, and uh, who else? Off the top of my head now. Ryan Dyer, Nick Page, Mad Peterson. Um, I think that's pretty much it that, yeah. you know, yeah. I don't spend too much time like uh, watching tutorials. So only every now and then, like I said before, where if I yeah, something if something's nagging at me yeah. and I'm like, okay, I, I, I'd like to improve in this area, then I'll go looking. Yeah, in terms of editing, for me, I I don't think you can go past if you if you want to get down deep into how you know Photoshop and or Lightroom works, yeah. uh, F sixty four um, Academy oh, stuff. Yes, I've watched some of his stuff before. Yeah. Yes. In, in terms of understanding how those sliders, what they're doing to your image, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I don't think there's a, uh, what's his name? Blake Rudis, I think his name is. Um, I don't think there's a, a better example of how to, you know, learn the craft of actually editing your image, you know, in terms of understanding the, not, not just the technical, but, you know, the, the, the um, aesthetic qualities of what, what, what those sliders are actually going to do to your to your image, and uh, you know, for me, I I, I just I've, I've learned so much and changed my processing technique around not necessarily following everything that he's doing, but you know, I've, I've built a workflow that kind of uh, lends you know quite heavily from from some of his uh, some of his work. Actually, there's, there is one guy, uh, and this is when I first started learning editing, actually. Uh, uh, Anthony Morgan, I think it's Anthony Morgan. Okay. Anthony Morganti, I think his name is. Uh, um, and basically, he does a lot of. It's all free stuff on YouTube, and he does a lot about uh, Lightroom, and he just yep. goes through all the tools, what they can and can't do. And I do remember actually now that's how I I started with Lightroom. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. I learned all the ins and outs. And all the things you can and can't do, and uh, what? Uh, yeah, it was a great way to start. It was definitely, uh, um, you know, uh, definitely learned a lot from, from those mm-hmm. tutorials. Do you prefer photographing alone or with other people? Um, I would say mostly alone. I do like the company. Uh, I mean, I used to go out with a few photographers in the past. Mm-hmm. And we definitely had a, a few laughs and a good time, but uh, I find sometimes it's a, can be a little bit distracting. Yep. So if I'm going to a new place, I'd prefer to go by myself because it's it's so I can just focus on what I need to do. But if I'm going yeah. to say like a place like Chance Cove, yep. Uh, every now and then I'll go with a friend of mine up in Chance Cove. I have no problem with that because I know the area, I know what to expect. Yeah, yeah, and I'm probably going to come out with something just a little different, or it's just for a bit of fun. It's not necessarily I'm going there to try and get you know an epic shot. Yeah, but generally speaking, yeah, I do prefer to shoot on my own. Mm-hmm. Is is that a conscious decision that you make, or is it just that, that that's just what you like doing? Uh, I would say it's it's a bit of both. I do like uh, sh- shooting and by myself but definitely uh, i like to spend time by myself so that little uh, escape sometimes uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's nice to just you know go out and uh go on a little hike by yourself catch yeah. a sunrise I, I i gotta agree i sometimes like that time where you know i don't have to think of anyone else's needs or or whatever you know and it, it's it, it's about what you want to do and it's taking time for yourself to to get in the zone and and you know, get in there, do what you want, and come out with something that uh, you're happy with. Yes, for sure, and I, I get it. Um, but at, at the same time, I, I mean, I do, I do enjoy, you know, every now and then getting out with another photographer and having and having a chat. And mm. of course, I, I do like to talk photography, so it's, uh, you know, it's 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 definitely. Uh, something i like to do as well sure. but uh the time by myself i, I definitely enjoy that 
Yeah. What do you do if you hit a creative wall? I don't know if I get that many creative walls because I do go through periods where I'm just too busy and yeah. Yeah. I can't do photography. So I think I'm, I'm getting that time away. Yeah. And I'm not just doing photography all the time. Mm-hmm. So it's enough that when I do, when it comes time to, to go do some photography, uh, I'm, I'm recharged and yeah. I'm excited about going and, and, you know, checking out a new, new, new location or going on a trip. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, something I don't run into very often. Yeah, that's great. What's your favorite thing about being a photographer? It's probably, uh, never, never being 100% satisfied. Mm, okay. That's great. About where you are, um, as a photographer, uh, it's go, you're never going to completely master it. And you, you, there's always something to learn. So that, mm-hmm. that's definitely, uh, one of my favorite things. The time alone, uh, out, you know, on a hike or, you know, shooting a sea stack. Um, that's definitely, uh, that's definitely up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, that's probably why I choose landscape photography. I prefer landscapes over people photography for sure. <laughs> yeah. 100%. I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah. Landscape doesn't talk back, doesn't, doesn't demand to no. uh, get the, uh, the prints two minutes after you've taken the shot. <laughs> No, I want a hundred percent. I mean, I will, if I have to, like, I just, uh, I've just finished a, uh, I just finished a, uh, contract job there, uh, yesterday actually where it did involve people. So, yep. but it's not too much where it's like, it's, uh, portrait photography or wedding yep. photography. So it was just setting up a few scenes where, you know, you're, uh, it, for tourism basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. So, it's, it's not, it's definitely not as bad. Yeah. It's, the landscape plays a bigger part of it. Uh, the, yes, the, 100%. The people and they're just here to add to the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. What do you see as the biggest challenge facing photographers right now? I got to say, uh, probably AI is going to be one of the biggest, I think, personally, it's going to be one of the biggest challenges. Uh, I'm not sure about what we're doing as landscape photographers will, but I think, yeah. um, and I'm sure you're, uh, you're aware of, uh, Dolly. Is it Dolly? I think it was, yeah. is yep. what it's called. Yeah. Um, I think the, uh, product photographers are going to get hit pretty hard. Yeah. Totally agree. Right. Yeah. But from, uh, from some of the things that we do, well, the art side probably will, I think, because uh they can pretty it can pretty much create you know some epic looking scenes but from a tourism point of view i'm not sure about that though because i think uh with that people want to see scenes of places that actually that, exist that actually actually exist <laughs> exactly so if you have an ai cre- re- trying to recreate that and there's a few elements in there that never existed in the first place. Uh, I don't think that's going to go over too well. No, I, no. <laughs> that's not as advertised. <laughs> no, exactly. Right. So, but I, you know, I mean, I could be completely wrong. Who knows what way this is going to go, but I definitely, it does, uh, it definitely does look like it's going to change things. Absolutely. In the next yeah. five to 10 years, I'd say. Yeah. What do you say is the future of photography? Or landscape photography in particular. Landscape photography? Um, yeah. That's a good question. It's not something I really think about, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I just, uh, again, like, you know, I have a full-time job and I love photography. And, uh, but if tomorrow I had to quit, photography especially for my family and i have no problem doing that so if there is no future for talk for photography in the next five to ten years i'll be okay with that sure 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 but as far as where i think it's gonna go that's that's tough you know i I mean gear is 
is getting better for sure. I think it's just going to be easier. It's going to be the barrier for entry is 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 going to continue to get easier and easier for people because either the gear is going to make it easier to shoot scenes that were very difficult to shoot five years ago. Yeah. Like exposure blending, for instance, you're like cameras now you can get that, you know, one shot really. Yeah, so you don't really need to use that uh, focus stacking. I mean, that's pretty well taken care of now. Yeah. I think it's the D850 and there are a few other cameras, I believe that have it as well. Mm-hmm. So you you know you have that in your in in your your tool bag right off the bat. You don't even have to learn that if you don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say you know that it's definitely going to get easier and easier, and the barrier for entry is going to it's going to get lower and lower, and uh, it'll probably become more competitive mm. as time goes on, especially if you're trying to make a bit of money at it. But if you're just doing it for a bit of fun, uh, I can't, you know, really, what's really going to change is, you know, if you're doing it for fun, you're doing it for the experience. You're doing it for seeing some of these places that you don't get to see every day. Um, So it's less about. I I don't think people that are doing it creatively as well, you know, art for art's sake, that's always going to be what they do. And yeah. You know, AI isn't going to force them out, and you know, unless, unless our robot overlords come and uh, you know take all our cameras away. <laughs> uh, I was I read a post on uh, Barrow's uh, Mark Mark Adamus, yep. and he I don't know if you saw this post, and that's what he was talking about. He was talking about AI, and he said something along the lines of how um, it doesn't matter how good AI gets. Basically, is it, I took this shot. I experienced it. I edited it. This, this is this is my shot. Basically, yeah. I don't know. He didn't say it exactly like that, but yeah, that was the essence of it. Yeah, the essence of it. Yes, right. So in the end, it's it doesn't matter yeah. if, especially if 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 you're doing it for the experience. Yeah. What tips would you have for someone that's just starting out in landscape photography? I guess the way I did it was just start small start with something specific uh that you're interested in uh like uh, I, I always like long exposure so i mean that was one of the first things i tried to figure out um so stick to you know doing small things small steps um mm. and don't do editing starting off of course just learn learn how to do things in camera first and yep. uh manual uh definitely learn how to do manual uh that's pretty much all i use is manual yep. uh, i'm not even sure if i'd know how to use any any other uh <laughs> mode <laughs> to be honest with you um but uh and then uh, i would say go in you know learn learn a little bit about editing because editing is another you know uh, you know yourself it's just uh it's another whole uh yeah, big old beast and there's, there's a lot to get your your arms around isn't there hundred percent and uh take your time with that because you can go in a lot of wrong directions. I feel like I'm still doing that at times. Yep. Um you you really got to be take your time with that and just, you know, pay attention to what you're doing. Um and there's so much out there that you can it's just it's unlimited. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you like to do when you're not out shooting? When I'm not out shooting, spending time with my kids. Nice. Yeah. That's definitely. Um, I'll I'll I'll, def- I'll definitely try to do some things with them, uh, camping. Mm. Um, sometimes. Um, besides that, reading. I love to read. Mm. Science fiction. Okay. Um, yeah, I find it's just something completely different, and you know, it kind of brings me down and relaxes me. Yep. Uh, and uh, you know, work. And that's it, pretty much. That's my life. <laughs> Work, reading, kids, photography. Yeah, nice. So who's your favorite science fiction author? Um, my favorite science fiction author? Uh, I'm, let me see. That's tough. Uh, I would say the author I'm reading now. I'm reading a book now. It's called uh, Earth Abides. Okay. Yep. 
Andrews is his last name. Yeah. Really good. Um, and uh, I like uh, Ian M. Banks. Mm -hmm. Fantasy. I like fantasy, of course. J.R. Yeah. Tolkien. Yeah. yeah, it's one of my favorite. So are there any other photographers out there that you think I should be talking to? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, there's a guy I've been following for years, uh, Frank, Frank Delergy, his name. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation, but I can definitely send you his, uh, Instagram handle. Um, yeah, yeah he's really good, actually. Uh, really good. Um, been following him for years. There's a guy on the East coast. Uh, his name is, uh, Adam, Adam Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, works out of, uh, Nova Scotia. Yep. So a lot, a lot of great images there. And one more, probably Jake Graham. He's a guy. Oh. He, yeah. I, I don't know. Do you know him? I've seen his work. I don't yeah. know him. Yeah. 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 He does a lot of stuff around Canada. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he's. A, I'll I'll send you his information. Fantastic. Thank you for that. No well, problem. I got my last question, uh, which if you've uh, listened to any of my podcasts, you, you know what's coming. Do you like pineapple yeah. on pizza? Obviously. <laughs> love it. I mean, I don't eat pizza like I used to, but I absolutely love pineapple on pizza. And I remember as a kid, the first time I heard someone say, do you want pineapple on pizza? And I was just like, what? I, I, I thought it was gross, but when I did try it, it was, I never turned back. <laughs> so you you reckon those ones that are against it, they just haven't tried it? Nope, that's it, right? <laughs> yeah. it, it's almost like the peanut butter banana sandwiches. You ever have a peanut butter banana sandwich? I uh, can't say I have. I've had uh, peanut butter and jelly. Uh, yeah, well, peanut butter and jelly is great, but peanut yeah. butter and banana is, is wicked. Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll have to, I'll, I'll, I'll trust you on that and I'll, I'll have to give it a go. <laughs> yeah, that was another one I thought was gross. And then when I tried it, I was like, wow, yeah. wicked. Wow. Well, all right. Well, thank you very much for uh, spending some time with us uh, today, Gord. It's been really fantastic getting to know you. Um, where can people find your work? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Vero. All right. No you search Gord Follett and you'll find me. I'll make sure there's uh, links in the show notes. Thanks again, Matt. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks again for listening to Landscape Photography World. I hope you enjoyed the show and keep listening because I'll be joined by some great guests in upcoming episodes. You can find my work in this podcast at grantswinburnphotography.com. I'm also on Vero, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. I'm Grant Swinburne. Hope to see you out shooting soon. <laughs>